OK, so here's my take on, on the climate change issue. Um, on the climate change issue, I'm not going to pretend that I'm an expert in, in reading the studies. I do know that certain aspects that have been widely talked about have been debunked. The idea that the Arctic ice is disappearing is nonsense. Uh, the idea that the hockey stick graph is anything remotely resembling reality. The hockey stick graph shows over the last century, and it's, it's too short a period of time to do climate change statistics like this. It shows over the last century, century and a half, that the climate, along with carbon emissions, go like that, that it's a hockey stick. The problem is that's falsified data. Uh, there have been multiple problems with the measurement data as far as global warming. Uh, the, that's why they call it climate change now and not global warming, because the, the Earth basically has not been warming for the last 15 years or so. All of which is to say, if you could come up with a solution that did not hurt millions of people and plunge us back into the 1850s, then maybe we could talk about it. The problem is that nobody, even on the left, people who are the biggest climate ch anthropogenic climate change advocates, cannot tell you what we are supposed to do to stop climate change. Everything they're talking about is, at the very least, trimming around the edges. So if climate change is based on carbon emissions, and carbon emissions have caused all this damage, then you need to dramatically scale back carbon emissions to the point that, basically, you stop driving cars, that you stop having coal emissions that power all of the, all of the energy in the country. There, the green energy is the biggest boondoggle that ever was. I mean, solar energy is providing less than 4% of the nation's energy at this point, and we've invested billions and billions and billions of dollars into it. So until we come up with something nearly as efficient, we're going to have to make a choice. Either we're going to have to let the market come up with something as efficient as carbon-based energy, which is going to take a little while, or we are going to, if you take this problem as seriously as the left purports to take it, or you are going to have to plunge people into living standards of the third world. And by the way, even if you do that, I promise you, China's not going to stop developing its, its carbon emissions. And the, the reality is that all the developing countries, environmentalism is a luxury of the rich. That's the truth. When you're in China, when you're in the third world, you don't give a damn. When you're in the third world, all you want to make sure of is that your kid doesn't die at night. And if that means that you're lighting cow chips on fire, which is what they actually do for warmth in, in, in huge swaths of the world, and that causes significant emissions, significant carbon emissions, then you'll do it. Because, hey, if it's my kid or the temperature rises by 0.000000000000001 degrees Celsius over the next century because I lit this fire, I, fine, I don't care. And by the way, this idea that the climate has ever stopped changing is ridiculous. If there were climate change, the entire heartland of the country would become three times as productive in terms of, in terms of crop productivity. Uh, the, the, the climate change has always been, been occurring, uh, which is why you know, Pangea. It's why, there, it's, 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 it's why there, the, the climate in, across the Earth has changed radically across time. There have been ice ages and there have been non-ice ages. There have been global warming periods and global cooling periods. In fact, global warming periods historically have been significantly better he to humans than global cooling periods. Global, period, uh, global cooling periods have been significantly damaging to the human population. So, uh, right, so a couple of things. One, the, the subset of climate scientists is not all that large, so I really don't care what a doctor in biology has to say about climate change. He knows, about as, he knows as much as I do. So it depends on what they have a doctorate in. Right, right so, so you're right. There, there are a lot of climate scientists and, and, uh, and you know, climatologists who have, who have said that, that global warming is an absolute fact and anthropogenic global warming is an absolute fact. They have very different measurements as to how large that effect is going to be. There is a broad range among climatologists, as far as I can tell, uh, the, uh, among how much the climate is going to actually change and what is the direct impact of carbon emissions on that, given the fact that for the last 15 years there has been no global warming. Uh, you know, the, 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 the single largest study of global warming that was done in, the, in, the, in Britain, it turned out a lot of the data was actually kind of falsified. So the, it's, it's, I'm not saying that it's not happening. It may be happening. You know, I'm, I'm happy to say that it may be happening. I'll, I might even be happy to say that it's, it's probably happening. But again, unless you have a solution to the problem that does not involve killing off millions of human beings. Oh, I'm, no, 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 right, no, no. And then, no, but this is the, I, I agree, but the problem is that if you're going to provide, if you're going to make, this is another issue where the demonization is significantly more important to the left than actually solving the problem. Right, so, so everything that the left says about climate change is basically, you're a climate change denier, therefore you're a fool. Right? As opposed to, OK, maybe, maybe you're wrong about climate change denial, but here's the solution that you're ignoring. Where's the solution that's being ignored? Right? I'm sorry, it's not Holocaust denial. The, the, the use of the language denier is, is pretty ridiculous on its face, considering that, there, that 30 years ago they were claiming there was going to be a grand ice age that was going to freeze us all to death. So you know, I'm, I'm willing to wait for the evidence to come in, especially given the fact that we don't have a good solution for it at this point. It, once, there's a, uh, once there's a plausible solution that, that the left actually wants to propose, we can talk about costs and benefits of it. But um, you know, the, I, 
also have to, I have to understand what exactly is the real imminent threat to human life. I mean, the, the idea that, that the gradual rise of sea levels is going to kill hundreds of millions of people, is, is, it's just fantasy. It's just fantasy. It's not going to kill. It, 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 they act like the day after tomorrow is how global warming is going to be. Right? Like a giant wave is going to sweep in, and then the next morning it will freeze, and all of New York will be under ice, and Dennis Quaid and Jake Gyllenhaal will be trying to fight their way through it. That's not how global warming is going to happen. Right? Global warming is going to happen. If, if it does happen at the, the rate they say it's going to, it's supposed to happen over the course of the next 100 years. So let's say, let's say for the sake of argument, that all of the water levels around the world rise by, by let's say, 5 feet over the next 100 years, say 10 feet by the next 100 years, and it puts all the low-lying areas on the coast underwater, right? which let, let's say all of that happens. You think that people aren't going to just sell their homes and move? It's not like, it's, not like it's all going to happen at once. Like there's just a big tsunami that comes and wipes out everybody. So human beings have a way of adjusting. Human beings have a way of dealing with these things. And, and I have more faith in human beings to deal with the, the crucial move from Santa Monica to the San Fernando Valley than I do in, in, okay, we're all going to stop using our cars, burning coal, and using electricity. That seems to me a much worse solution than, okay, I'm going to have to sell my beachfront property at a discount price. By the way, that's who it's going to hit, the people with beachfront property. It's not going to hit anybody in, in Indiana. You're, you're pretty safe. It'll be all right. For, for definitions, right? They do this on climate change, too. Say, do you believe in climate change? Are you a climate denier? Like, no, I, I don't deny the climate. It exists, right? <laughs> do you believe in climate change? Well, yes, I mean, the climate changes. What are you talking about? Would you like to get more specific? Now, what per do you know, for example, what percentage of human activity is responsible for the rise in climate? Do you have any clue what we would have to do in order to minimize human activity so as to go back to the amounts of carbon that were being sent into the atmosphere before the industrial age? Is that something that you're willing to... How many people are you willing to let die? How many people are you willing to impoverish based on lack of carbon-based fuels? How many people are you willing to let suffer? in order to do this. In the third world, by the way, because those are the people who are going to suffer if they're not using carbon-based fuels. You know, people on the left are very fond. They, they, they have this kind of rosy picture of what it would be like to go back in time. They would still get to keep their iPhone, but they'd go back in time. If they, <laughs> if they, if they really want to go back in time, there is a time machine on this planet. It's called an airplane. All you have to do is fly to the third world, and you just went back about 70 years in time. Right? And the fact is they don't want to live with that. So you're allowed to give them these kind of minor victories where you where you say, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm sure, climate change. But then, then you hone in, right? Because they, they, they feel like they're on their home turf, and then you flip it on them, and it's a really fun Meanwhile, I don't know if you saw this story. Apparently, Bill Gates, the richest man on Earth, literally the richest man on Earth, came out for socialism today. He did an interview in The Atlantic, and he talked about how socialism was a grand and wonderful thing. This did not cause him to give up 50 of his $100 billion or, or cause him to start handing out his money on street corners, but... He says that socialism is a wonderful thing. It is amazing how many people who are experts in one field are complete idiots in another. This is the beauty of capitalism, folks. It can take otherwise useless people like Bill Gates and make them multi-gajillionaires because they actually invent products that we like to use. Because obviously Bill Gates has no clue how the world works, but we can still make a useful person of him and make a very wealthy person of him. Here is what Bill Gates said over the weekend. And I think it is amazing how many one percenters, people who are at the very top of the spending spectrum, are people who are, who are willing to come out in favor of socialism and redistribution of wealth. Here's what Bill Gates said. He said, quote, There's no fortune to be made in green energy. Even if you have a new energy source that costs the same as today's and emits no carbon dioxide, it will be uncertain compared with what's tried and true and already operating at unbelievable scale and has gotten through all the regulatory problems. Without a substantial carbon tax, there's no incentive for innovators or plant buyers to switch. And what he's saying here is that we need to use government regulation in order to cram down green energy on people. We can't just let the market take care of it, even though the market always goes for the most efficient energy source. No, we have to let government cram down on people. And I think that it's worthwhile just taking a minute to explain why this is wrong in the environmental setting and then why it's wrong generally. Because there are too many people who are buying into the Bernie Sanders notions. I'm sure people who are watching or listening, you have friends, family members, you shouldn't have friends, but family members who believe in Bernie Sanders. If you have a friend who believes in Bernie Sanders, you shouldn't be friends with this person because this person, number one, is not intelligent and number two, uh, believes in something that's actually tremendously evil because Bernie Sanders has, of course, stood up for Fidel Castro, among others. But there is this concept out there that only government can make the environment better, which is idiotic because, after all, the worst polluting country in the world right now is China, which is no shortage of government. Now, what people normally use to talk about why the, the environment is better is they talk about 
CAFE standards. This would be the, car, uh, the corporate average fuel economy standard, that the government has increased the standard for production of cars. They have to produce more fuel efficient cars. What people forget is the reason the government had to do that in the first place is because government subsidized gas and oil. Government made it cheap so that people would buy cars in the first place. And then because gas was cheap, they had to create another program to mandate that the car manufacturers not take advantage of the cheap gas, but they make really fuel efficient gas. Now there's a very easy way to solve the problem of non-fuel efficiency, and that is let gas go to its normal price. If gas is at its normal price, then scarcity means the prices go up and then people will want more fuel efficient cars to save money. But according to Bill Gates, this is just no good. And Bill Gates wants a carbon tax. He wants to tax everything out of, out of, out of existence. Andrew Clavin, I thought, had, a, had a, an amazing point on his podcast the other day. I mean, you know, Andrew, he's, he's a dunderhead on a lot of things, but on this, he was exactly right. And that is that Drew said, he was talking about this, it was, it was really wonderful. And if you haven't listened to Drew's podcast, seriously, it's a, fin, it's a fantastic podcast, folks. You should click out of this when you're done, and you should tune on over to, to Drew's podcast, which I download every day and enjoy immensely. It's really a lot of fun. It's, it's about as different from a, sh a show from this one as you could get. This one's very topical and newsy, and Drew's is much more philosophical, but it's very deep. And one of the things he said is he said that you know, if you watch the movie Avatar and you see all of the beautiful lights and the swirly things and the flying creatures and all that, we have that. It's called oil, right? That's what makes things go, right? Oil makes all of these magical things happen. Uh, Bill Gates wants to wipe oil out in order to make the environment better, which is just foolishness of the highest order, again, considering that people would prefer to live not in massive poverty. And then Bill Gates continued. He, he said, since World War II, U.S. government R&D research and development has defined the state of the art in almost every area. Okay, the idea that U.S. government R&D has defined the standard in every area is just beyond absurd. Uh, R&D in, in the government sector has really lagged in most areas, is the truth. I mean, if you look at Aside from the development of military technology, all of the good developments in computer technology are taking place in the private sector, not on behalf of the government. He says the private sector is in general inept. This is Bill Gates talking, the guy who invented Microsoft, right? The private sector is in general inept. This $100 billion Bill Gates. The climate problem has to be solved in the rich countries. China and the U.S. and Europe have to solve carbon dioxide emissions, and when they do, hopefully they'll make it cheap enough for everyone else. Well, I have another solution that Bill Gates might like, and that is we could all just become poor again. We could be extremely poor and we could die at 30 and we could have no carbon-based fuels and life could suck dramatically, but at least the world wouldn't be getting warmer. Okay, John writes, my family leans left and often spouts statistics that 97% of scientists believe in climate change. The only basic argument I have heard from conservatives is that there is no evidence for climate change or that it is too limited. If the argument is we are not 100% sure climate change is happening, wouldn't it still be prudent to err on the side of caution and take necessary steps just in case? Can you give a more detailed defense of your position? Okay, so there's a great article at Daily Wire. You can search for it. It was written by a climate scientist debunking all of the various myths about climate change. Here's the short answer to your question. Number one, 97% of scientists do not agree with certainty that the world is going to warm to the point where it's actually dangerous. Plus, 97% of scientists includes people who have nothing to do with climate. I mean, you ask my wife, she's a scientist, she's a doctor. Does she know anything about climate, uh, climatology? No, she doesn't know anything. She's a family physician. Okay, so scientists are not all in the same field. Number two, there's one thing we agree on. There's something called a greenhouse effect. That exists, okay? If you put carbon into the atmosphere, it warms the earth. No question. The question is, how much does it warm the earth? Does the earth have patterns that, that cool it? Meaning they've been saying now that the oceans might be absorbing some of the, some of the emissions so that that's preventing all of this from happening. How much does it matter? How much of this is due to natural weather patterns? What level is is sophisticated? What level is is certainly attributable to human behavior? And most of all, even if you wanted to reverse this, what would it take? The problem is that when you say, wouldn't it be better to err on the side of caution? Well, when you're talking about doing away with fossil fuels, which power pretty much everything, when you're talking about going back to 1850 standards of living, complete with 1850 lengths of life and, and all of the rest of it, no, I'm not willing to to bet on that, especially when. You know, everybody talks about the end. Of, it's not the end of the world, okay? If, if cities have to move, cities have to move. I mean, the fact is that Venice has been obviously sinking for the last couple of hundred years, more than that, a couple of thousand years. So, you know, that that happens. It's I'm not willing to sacrifice the well-being of all of Western civilization on the 50-50 bet that the waters are going to rise a foot. I'm just not willing to do